It's over, Barry. I have the high ground. Well, that didn't end well. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Vader, Shards of the Past, a fan film by Star Wars Theory. Bop, bop, bop it up. That's my theme song for High Ground. Ah. Ah, I'm James Zule. Joining me with, joined by. Barry. Barry, how are you doing today? Hello, Patreon. Yeah. I'm doing excellent. How are you? Great. You are a Patreon, so you guys uh, check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash podcast. Also, you should give us a like and a subscribe. And comment and share. And comment and share and share and tell your friends to share. And if you tell all of your friends to share, you could win a smile from me. <laughs> worth more than gold. It's not really, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth nothing. We are. We're going to talk uh, Vader, Shards of the Past, a f- Star Wars fan film by none other than Star Wars Theory, like I said. And this is, um, you have been, I have to say, and I hope you're okay with me saying this, you have been yeah. championing this uh, fan film uh in in at least to me but it, on social media i see you mentioning <laughs> a lot and um and if you haven't had a chance to see it you know 10 million people have and you should be the 10 million and one person to watch that uh fan film because it i have to say as you know we talked about mall last week but th- this one is um i'm invested in this story that's what i will that's how i'll start it very much take it from there yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I think the history behind this film, you know, it's really uh, what I love about Star Wars Theory. He's a fellow Canadian out of Vancouver. Um, just the amount of love that is poured into this film. I mean, this is really a love letter to the fans and the whole process of how it from start to finish and how it was executed is so evident in just Star Wars Theory's actions. And you can see um, if you followed it from start to beginning, I mean, he's involved the fan base. And I think from a storytelling perspective, it's really kind of an eye-opening of what you can achieve when you listen to your fans, maybe retcon a bit, but write an incredible story. Um, So he used his own funds to pay for this film. We're talking a couple hundred thousand Canadian, which I know is pretty expensive American. It's like $7.50 American. It's about $7.50. Yeah, it's about (laughs) $7.50. But, but the story behind it is what I am intrigued by. So he wrote Lucasfilm personally, and he spoke with some higher executives up. I have kind of my own theories on who he probably conversed with. But they essentially gave him a guideline, a series of guidelines and said, hey, yep, we're behind it. Make this project. Just stay within these lines. You can't make it for profit. And you have fun. And I think what it really struck to me was the core of what we loved about Lucasfilm, uh, for me anyway, when I was in with the prequel trilogy came out this celebration of fan films and that it is something about being a star Wars fan is writing your own story. And now you have Lucasfilm pretty much saying, yeah, go for it, have fun uh, and just make something incredible. And he did, um, you know, he reached out to the fan base, um, offered auditions to anyone who could basically come down to LA. I mean, they hired a guy named Danny Ramirez who is as director, he, you know, he works in the industry they had clone troopers come down guys who just you know if you've got the 501st legions around your area i mean a couple of guys that come down. i mean just really anyone who had a skill set or could offer something that fit what they needed into the film they were able to come alongside star wars theory and help make this film incredible and uh, as you can see uh, it's blowing up on social media so if you haven't seen the film you probably don't have the internet and i would highly encourage <laughs> you find some place you know, stop by a Starbucks if you're in Seattle. Or Vancouver. <laughs> or some other place. <laughs> Maybe a library. You know, just watch it. I mean, yeah. it's amazing to see what you can do with funds. And then, I, of course, for me, I've kind of an operational background. I work with finances. So budgets to me are in operations and how you get things accomplished. Are always intrigued. I'm always intrigued by that. And to see this team pull something off with maybe a fraction 10 percent of what hollywood do would do and then get the views on top of that i mean to me it's like disney knock on this guy's door he's the type of people you want to be hiring so yeah i'm really excited about this fan film and if you haven't seen it go see it and we're about to talk about it well he's on disney's radar so let's just hey, you've been championing this and i want and I've, I've seen this film obviously we're talking about it the 
the thing that's great about this one is like all good films really it the opening scene just grabs you and sucks you in and it kind of makes you say it, you know what you're in for from the very from the very beginning but you see something not necessarily new or different but familiar mixed with like this is the Vader from sorry, what I'm trying to say is this is kind of like Vader from Rogue One mixed with something we've seen only Kylo Ren do, which is stop the bullet, and it's just he shows the strength of Vader and the power Vader has with the Force in this opening scene, like we've never, with the exception of Rogue One, which we've never really seen before, and this is even up from that, and then you question, but then the question is, well, if Vader's this powerful, why in why isn't he like that in the original trilogy? And all of a sudden, the mo- the the the, sh- the f- short film starts, c- and you realize, oh, that's actually in his mind. And so it's like this is what he is capable of, but he will never let himself be capable of that. And you find out as this progresses why. And yeah, I was totally on board with everything that uh, Star Wars theory-, theory was throwing my way. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. You know, Kylo Ren stops one blaster bolt. He's like, now let's have Vader stop just a whole cluster. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Um, oh, gosh. what I think for me what I loved about is, you know, we read in the comics all the time and, you know, the novels and just I mean, just amazing material of this inner conflict. And you have to wonder. And for me, I'm a questions guy. So when I watch a movie, I'm always asking why, what's the motivation? And so I'm like, how did we get from Anakin Skywalker episode three to now episode four vader this overarching overlord who's just you know pure power evil malevolence when he walks into a room what happened what part did he have to kill off on himself did he have to put to death and you see that with the opening scene this conflict and struggle as he's dealing with this rage and anger and taking it out on these clone troopers in the vision and then you see uh the prequel tie-in where you know he you see Padme and him as Anakin as a young boy and him conflicted with that and just bouncing in between those things as he comes to terms and realizes, you know, this, I, you know, this is my life now. I've made these choices. I've gone down this path of evil and this is the conflict I'm dealing with. And so I really enjoy that. You don't get to see a lot of that on a film level uh, that I think, you know, Maul or not Maul. Ooh, Vader. (laughs) (laughs) Little bias crept in there. Yeah, there you go. Vader, you know, just the conflict that Vader must have had during that time. What I liked about that is uh, the book Lords of the Sith. I don't know if you've read that uh, book or not, but it it reminded me a lot of Lords of the Sith because Lords of the Sith, they get inside Vader's mind. And and I've said this and I've said this on the channel several times and it'll be on the upcoming Outlander Club podcast. Check it out. Um, that when you read that book and and you watch the prequels and then you read Lords of the Sith and then you watch the original trilogy, you see Vader in a completely new light. You get inside of his mind. And what I loved about this was you're inside of his mind visually now. You don't have to read it. You can actually see it and experience it and hear it and know what's, what his thought process is and how much Padme meant to him and it is affecting him until this day. And it humanizes Vader in a way that makes him... I think as much as Vader is like the greatest film villain of all time, this humanizes him and it makes you feel sorrow for him. And, and you just, it's just, it brings to light this whole other part of him that he is in agony and pain for the rest of his days. And it's not just physical pain, but it's mental pain. And he's, he has to do everything his master, the emperor wishes because he has nothing else anymore. Yeah, and for me, I know Return of my Je- the Jedi is my favorite from the old tri- original trilogy. Um, so just ne- then viewing those fight scenes from like Empire Strikes Back, where he, you know he takes on Luke, and then the final fight scene of why he turned back and decided to throw the Emperor over, uh, you know, and kind of redeem himself, it gives it a new light, and you can see well if this is the inner turmoil turmoil he's been dealing with for decades now it's finally come to a head and he's made the right decision for redemption and you can see how that kind of progressed it's beautiful i think what i also loved about um just the cinematography aspect in it from danny ramirez is i don't know if you're a fan of ring theory or familiar with it 
the oh, Star yes. Wars. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, it's um, there's this awesome film paper written about how Lucas interconnected the films through various ways of shooting scenes, colors, characters, reverse roles, paralleling different um, action sequences. So what I noticed in the film is during the vision part, you see the rage, the red, the crimsons, the darkness, uh, just the all out explosive nature of Vader's motions. And then when we get to the reality, oh, you see the colors have changed now to clears and blues mm. and more of kind of a sterile environment to kind of illustrate that, yes, Vader is this chained rage machine. But when it comes to him with the emperor, he's really just another lapdog. And um, I mean, kudos to the director, Danny Ramirez. You uh, really did your homework there. Um, and I really enjoyed just watching that parallel uh, within the film. Yeah, it was it, visually, it's very striking, actually. it uh, A lot of it looks like it had a way larger budget than it definitely did. <laughs> I will say, I think my favorite shot, and this, I think this is an obvious one, though, is that first shot of the close up of, of unmasked Vader's face. And you see that, and it's just like. Whew, awesome like that is that's what i was hoping to see in rogue one and we never yes. quite got there <laughs> and that's what we got here and it's like and it just it looks so good and it reminds you of the man behind the mask and you like it's the eyes it's 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 anakin's eyes it's the new like pre-vader eyes that you see and it's the sit but the now with the sith eyeball coloring it great shot yeah, and you know what I enjoyed too about the fight scene is we we're so familiar with you know the you know the prequels get a lot of flack for being a little you know more like kung fu dancing and a little over the top fight scenes that would never really happen in reality. But we've never really seen Vader. You know, Anakin was so skilled as a lightsaber. How do you translate that to Vader? Mm -hmm. And you know, we have Episode Four, Five, and Six, and he's kind of just an old man waving and fencing a little bit just because of the technology at the time but in these films like rogue one and now you know vader we get to see him kind of st he's still got that menacing foreboding nature where it's you know it's not just the colorful choreographs we get from the prequel trilogy now it's every attack and move and swipe with the lightsaber and force grip and throw it's intentional and it's meant to silence and end whatever he's facing and now you've seen that progress from anakin's skill to more of a I'm Vader, I'm evil, and this is what I do to my enemies. I end it, um, which adds more to his character. Great point. It's absolutely what he does. He's like, there's no time for nonsense. I'm taking you out. You're done. And he shows that in this. And the again, uh, going back to um, Lords of the Sith, is that rapport between Shivip and Vader. And Vader wants to kill Shivip. And, Sh and Palpatine knows. Sidious knows. Emperor knows. That Vader, the Vader wants nothing more than to off him, and that and the Emperor feeds off of that, but Vader can never bring himself to do it, and it's the internal struggle. Um, and I loved watching that play out in this. I loved reading in the book, and I love seeing it in this now. And the the what I'm the attention to detail that is brought to this on every aspect, from what you're saying with the lighting to to what you read from from the canon novels, and and of course a certain lightsaber that is it on Naboo? Yes. Uh, I'm always a fan of Naboo. And just seeing, I think hearing, uh, there's some good behind the scenes stuff uh, that I highly encourage you guys to watch about if you like the film. So they talk about how they've got this place and had to visit a couple locations. And it's actually a, uh, it's a mausoleum cemetery in California. Uh, but the fact that it was so Theed like uh, was just impressive. And of course, uh, are we doing spoilers? <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert. There's your warning. And stop watching now. But just the part where, you know, he finally gets there and you hear, okay, now he's going to go find that Jedi that the Emperor has commanded in the fight. And you, you can hear and see the Jedi below in the mausoleum taking out clone troopers. And then he ignites his lightsaber and then they end it. And you're like, really? <laughs> Where's episode two? <laughs> Don't leave me hanging. But, you know, again, hats off to Star Wars Theory for writing that and Danny for the shot and the team that pulled that off. You know, you you drew us in. You kept us engaged. And then, of course, my favorite way of writing is you just pull the rug out from under us. And you're like, when's n number two coming out? You know, that that's gifted story writing. And I really hand it off to that team that put the whole film together. We're looking forward to episode two. Yeah, it. it it, it was solid story and then it said there's more to this relax like it was it took you to where you needed to go 
and then it's going to take us further down the road and it made you want more it didn't feel incomplete it felt like you just wanted wanted more it's a little incomplete because we don't get to see who's holding that amethyst lightsaber i don't know who it could be hmm well if you've seen the concept <laughs> art i'm looking forward to the uh, alien jedi he's gonna stop in the future leading him up to his final conflict with a certain someone I'm looking who forward uh, to kit... survived a great fall <laughs> his name is kit fisto <laughs> yeah can you bring kit fisto back star wars theory that'd be great as well i am really looking forward to uh seeing more from this and and like you said that the fact that he contacted Lucasfilm and they were like, okay, fine. But Lucasfilm, look, they still do the Star Wars Fan Film Awards. Like, they, they fully embrace fan films. And that is what makes this fandom so great is that we can say, you know, those movies, we love the movies, but let's do our own. And we can enjoy them as separate canon or whatever. Like, can, this is why I say canon is fine, but it doesn't matter because we have all this material. And the fact that this doesn't exist within through the world of the movies that we're watching or the books that we're reading. It doesn't matter. It's still amazing. It's still fun. It's still enjoyable. We, it doesn't make it any less of anything. And so here's my pitch to Disney. <laughs> so I know there's been such conflict going on. Disney, if you really want to set yourself apart in this era of Star Wars trilogy, I say canonize fan films. Ba, 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 da. You got to be a little more in depth in that. Why should they canonize fan films? Just because the amount, the attention to detail um, is rivaling some of the stuff we see now on Netflix, Hulu, you know, t choose your medium now. The, the beauty of the technology now is that anyone who can learn and pick up some skill can pull something off. And so I'd say, you know, the fact that Star Wars Theory went to Lucasfilm, talked to high level execs and got the permissions with these guidelines, I could, you know, I could see something really setting the Disney era apart where give these fan films a set of guidelines you know with the fan film awards and you know what if someone makes something that's hollywood quality let's canonize it as a way to, to unite the fan base um, these films really speak to the heart and passion of fans um and they're not i know they're not just retconning it it and you know the fact i mean star wars theory you know i'm at a loss for words of the attention to detail and i mean he did his homework and that's really what the fans want and love and are hoping to see in more of the sequel trilogies and the new shows being offered on Disney plus, you know, we enjoy that the little, you know, the well-written stories that hide that in there, but they kind of wink and nod to those who have maybe studied some of the extra material, you know, that that's what we love, want and desire energize the fan base even more than what it is right now. And to bring such a unifying move, uh, canonizing fan films could accomplish that. I can get behind that. They should, Go through a committee. I'll be like, yep. that's a good one. That's a good one. And then put it on Disney Plus. That's it. Just put it on Disney Plus for everyone to see. Not, you know, and, and you'll you'll bring new eyes to fan films. The people that are part of the fan films now are going to buy Disney Plus, and their friends and family are going to buy Disney Plus just to watch this fan film. And it gives hope to other, um, you know, fan film creators out there that maybe you know if we do something solid enough, we could be a part of it. Uh, yeah. So uh, anyway. We're going to keep doing high grounds and uh, reviewing fan films. We'll be back next week with one that uh, is pretty dope, actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Not going to lie. But Vader, if you have not seen Vader Shards of the Past by uh, YouTube's own Star Wars Theory, get on it. Watch it. It is phenomenal. Just like we said, the attention to detail. Uh, you know, every part of it. The acting was good. The Vader was great. Emperor was great. The effects are solid. They're fun. Um, Naboo's back, and yes. uh, and so Much is missed. yeah, and it's gonna be uh, episode two when that comes out. It's gonna be a, a lot of fun, and we'll definitely be reviewing that one a lot sooner than we reviewed this one. But I mean, ten million views seem like all right. This one deserves to be reviewed. We'll <laughs> 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 we'll do that. All right, Barry. Thanks for joining me on the high ground this week. Thank you. And until next time, guys. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe means a lot to us that you actually spent time with us may the force of others be with you hey scumbags thanks for watching don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video as always please subscribe to our youtube channel rebel scum podcast for all the latest videos